and I believe we are live once more. I think my air conditioner kicked in just in time to make it noise in the background. I apologize for that. It's too warm. <laughs> it's summer. There's nothing I can do about that. Welcome to another uh, episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles Campaign 2, the Great Confusion Session, as you probably say, Session. I'm the host, GM, and largely responsible for all the potholes in the world, at least in the world of Omatia. I am Mark the Encaffeinated One, and I'm joined by my players, starting on my left with Pat. I'm Pat, and I am playing Silas Marsh, cultist. I am Maria, and apparently I'm playing Hendrick oh, today. That's a thing I forgot to do. <laughs> I knew there was something. Stop. There we go. <laughs> uh, and I play Annie. And I'm next, and I'm playing Medric, half orc cleric. Oh, so modest. Cultist, and just playing Annie, and. Definitely just playing Annie. Just playing Annie. Well, we are returning once more to, well, not exactly the world of Omisha because uh, this crew has gone plane hopping, you might say, uh, following a trail of clues and leftover planar gates from the ancient order of the Argenti Sagax, legendary planeswalkers who seem to no longer exist in this world, but whose remnants and remainders have been found. On a quest to... Well, the quest seems to have gotten a little muddied along the way, but initially on the quest to potentially find ways to uh, remove elements of a lost god from the world so the world can move on, hopefully find some evidence perhaps of how you might help one of your uh, cohort, a, uh, a um, well, I've even forgotten uh, what Catherine is. Maybe you don't know what Catherine is. Uh, a, well, she looked like a sphinx. Right. There's a term, and I'm forgetting it offhand for some reason, which is terrible. It's specifically gynosphinx. Gynosphinx, yeah. Gynosphinx, that's what I was looking for. Who was, um, well, un in unintentionally, <laughs> accidentally transported into some far realm uh, who where you haven't quite found yet. Uh, and also along the way, you've made, let's say, erstwhile... Uh, uh, allies of Tauzek Riva, a strange beholder with a bow tie who seems to have his own agenda uh, involving some outer planar god, one Oculon. But having solved the room of four parts, you found yourself traveling through yet another gate, this time to a dim, strange, slightly cold very it would be one of those things where it would be filmed with a gray filter this whole place that you find yourselves in a circular room at first where you emerged out of the floor out of some sort of embedded gate two large modules glowing and glistening with electric energy seeming to provide the power for the incoming gate around which you had noted there was a ring of symbols some of which which uh, some of which uh, stopped glowing as you came through. Just a little ways from there, you found yourselves a hallway in a room. The hallway uh, was a chance for Silas to peer on a little bit ahead. Saw a hallway full of what looked like broken statues or broken busts of times gone by in little alcoves. Also heard a bit of, of uh, clanking and a little bit of glowing light up ahead. Meanwhile, the rest had ventured into a room which you had been able to decipher uh, as rejuvenation. Uh, in fact, why don't I go to the map so we can show people uh, what this all looks like. I've actually added labels now to the floors in a couple of places. So rejuvenation and travel are the first two terms you were able to translate. Coming into this room, you saw a, a swarm of tiny mechanical beings uh, and taking no chances, uh, Medric introduced himself to the swarm with a blast of fire. The Not swarm bad. dissipated <laughs> into little cracks and, ne ne uh, and niches in the walls. 
The room seemed to have what looked like five stone beds with uh, small indentations around the surface. At the far end, uh, in this case we would call it the west end of the room, uh, you found a beautiful portrait that seemed to show a far-off land and a large fawn-like creature or fawn-legged creature um, looking back maybe impishly, maybe uh, somewhat um, playfully out of the, the portrait. The bottom of the portrait had another one of the nozzles you'd seen before. You saw a few of them in the other space where the where Tauzek Riva had taken up place, taken up uh, position. And uh, from what Dudek could deduce, it looked like some sort of healing. So he activated the nozzle with the small stone, which each of you have a, as a stone pendant, suspended in a square of wire. And sure enough, green billowing gas flowed out the room, causing most of you to fall asleep, except for Silas, who remained unaffected by the gas. In your slumber, you had peaceful dreams and a bit of rejuvenation, uh, as in fact you discovered that that is the claim for this room, the room of rejuvenation. Now, having recovered that from again. that, would you like to try it? I'll ask my, uh, I'll consult with my, uh, with my colleagues first. Should well, right we now, again? Annie and I are the only ones who are awake. I went over and woke Annie up, but I hadn't woken anyone else up. Oh, okay. Right when Gosh, Gosh came running in and something started pounding on the door. Um, did Silas get healed by that? I no. just want to clarify. Okay. No. Unfortunately, whatever the poison effect is, it actually is a healing poison, if that makes any sense. No problem. Uh, uh, it did also remove one condition, but I don't think anybody had any conditions that were no. lingering. Okay, once the thing starts pounding on the door, I will, I will kick everybody awake. <laughs> okay. I, I'm like holding my up my head. I Please mean, don't kick too hard. I don't want to take any bludgeoning damage. <laughs> <laughs> Knocks you off the platform onto the floor, which is stone. Roll me two d six. No. Um, <laughs> roll me two d six psychic damage for being woken up from a beautiful dream into the reality of existence. For real? No. <laughs> but you do that, kind of have what, what would what would have been the really nice dream that Medric was having? What's a moment of peace and calm, and uh, and reverie or, or or delight that Medric would have been having? There's fire everywhere. Well, not raging fire, but just like warm, comfortable fire. And uh, Medric is there. And also, there's a uh, flamekeeper Tidewell. And we're just having a nice conversation. Sort are of saying, up? the are you, inverse is, is of... Is he saying it's fine? Yeah. Hmm? Is, he, so right, is he in a room full of fire saying it's fine? It's fine, yeah. this is fine. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> this yeah. is not fine, this is great. <laughs> and for Annie, what sort of dream of peace do you have? Probably just a bunch of really good food. Nice. Like a royal banquet set up before you? Yep, but just no random people around. Just her and a banquet full of food. <laughs> so Annie's dream is a private buffet. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, you are awoken not only by the, the, uh, the probably gentle but urgent touch of Silas, uh, but also by the following deep-sounding... Uh, booms on the door, although the door itself is solid and, and not uh, not moving. The door is unlatched. You, did, you had heard it kind of internally latch shut when the gas set off, probably as a safety precaution. Imagining if everyone in the room was unconscious, that would be pretty vulnerable. But at least for the door itself, you don't think it's latched against you. Nonetheless, there is that boom. Um, have, have each of you make an insight check. Let's just do it that way. All right. 
a quick little roll to start things off. I have good insight, or Medric has good insight. I have poor insight as a player. Holy moly. Nat 20 for a 29 total. <laughs> nice. Well, I think Marie is, or sorry, uh, uh, well, maybe Marie as well, but Annie, maybe just sort of still licking your lips and kind of trying to imagine what all those delightful tastes were and the different, there's a whole extra table just of desserts and, um, whereas Silas has sort of probably gone into caution mode. But as Medric awakes, um, when you hear that, there's an odd tone about the the pounding on the door and it reminds you of your military training days back when you were um, essentially being trained by the Ignians for war although you were seconded you think that part is still a little vague but you were seconded into a larger war and fought alongside many others who were not Ignians but from a very early stage of your training there was a sense of cadence, there was a sense of rhythm, there was a sense of uh, command, almost. And you're reminded a bit, a bit of that right now, that the pounding on the door is not urgent, it's not animalistic, it's more like a rhythmic pounding or a call to order, almost like a bell or like a... Uh, um, a summons but with the thick walls you see around you no bell or summons unless magical would even reach you uh, gosh did you see what this thing looked like it doesn't feel hostile uh, gosh is looking at you with the one eye very very wide uh, a somewhat cringing body posture um kind of it's it's claws kind of curled in towards itself almost as if it's trying to make itself small uh and in your mind you hear the sort of disjointed voice that it uses um very big very strong looking moves quicker than i thought humanoid but not alive okay Is the sound of the knocking somewhat something knocking very hard or something trying to punch its way through the door? No, it's just... It almost feels like it's calling people to arms or something. Yeah, the door itself doesn't seem to be jarring particularly strongly. And after Medric points it out, you do sense a sort of boom, 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 pause. Boom, boom, boom pause of the same strength each time and the same the smooth uh, smooth striking I'll open the door okay um, for the sake of moving around here by the way I think we will move in initiative order we'll, we'll let kind of everyone arrange themselves at the moment where they would be in the room and he's right now standing in front of the door um, but just when it comes to any exploration that might be done, I think it would be easier just to keep the rhythm so that even if we do have people branching off in different directions, we have a, a regular check-in with everybody. I don't yep. know if Annie wants to stand behind the door or if Annie wants to stand across the room. I'll I take also a step have, back. I've also added a second, uh, uh, second POV uh, character, essentially, to make it a little easier. Uh, but I will move the POV character out of the way as you open the door and you, you can actually click on the door I believe and open it worst case scenario he just wants to reach us about um, our chariots instead of march and standing pretty much filling the entirety of the door you see about an 8 foot tall um, soldier you might say or perhaps knight um looks like uh, uh, I guess human in shape but eight feet tall um, covered in armor covered in uh, you see a large sword across its back completely from head to toe only looking at armor but it becomes apparent very very quickly that it only has the 
the look of armor. The texture is pure stone with little bits and pieces of metal here and there. A metal sword, for example. The sword itself would be effectively a great sword. Um, you open the door and it sort of has its hand uh, poised uh, up by its side as if to strike the door again. Then it lowers its door, or lowers its arm. Hi. You sense it, <laughs> well, first of all, its head kind of tilting down a little bit. Uh, there's a bit of a grinding sound, and the head kind of jerks a little bit as it moves downward, uh, and it looks to kind of regard you straight in the face. Um, then it kind of looks to the side to try to gauge anyone else it can see. Where did uh, where did Silas end up in the room? Uh, he's... Uh, is that where the other eyeball is? One of, yeah. Okay. Uh, he's behind Medrick because he had woken up uh, Annie. I will uh, just move the eyeball out of the way. Um, in a grating, broken, um, monotone voice, it speaks. Um, first of all, does anybody speak celestial? Nope. Um, no. I don't even think Zachus spoke celestial. So none of you seem to react. It repeats. It seems to repeat what it said in uh, another language, which none of you would know. Uh, and then um, moves to what sounds like common, but it would be essentially old common. It's like ye olde English that we experience here. Yeah. <laughs> um, which I won't try too hard to imitate. Uh, to imitate, but. Everything essentially is translated through that that mode. That word being summoned. Um, and the flat voice essentially says, "Please state your identity. Are you friend, or are you invader?" Uh, we're friends. I apologize about the accident with the mechanical spiders earlier. We were just rejuvenating. You see its head kind of tilt towards you in particular, and the head kind of tilts a little bit sideways. Aggressor identified. Please state your identity. I'm Medric, Kamar of Ignis. As I mentioned, I apologize for the spider incident. Kind of steps back for a moment. Quiet and silent. And these are my friends. That Identity says, uh, unknown. Oh, never mind. That's all it says. I'll hold out the uh, symbol of Ignis. Do you recognize this? Or... Kmar, Ignis. <laughs> it leans forward as if to look closer at the symbol. We are not here to cause problems. Follower of Ignis, Fire God, Principal Realm yes. Omatia, Identity Corroborated. What is your status? Looking for a friend, I guess. And I'll describe Melora and how she got lost in this other plane. It kind of steps back and stands straight up, impassively listening. What do the rest of you do in the meantime? Do anything? Because it will take a little while to explain all of that. Depending on how much depth Medric goes in, but even the smallest amount is going to prompt, well, and then we needed to explain this part, and then, well, there's this other part, and... I'm just giving him, I'm just giving him the, giving them the Cliff's Notes version. <laughs> mm hmm There's still quite a bit to that story. The TLDR version. <laughs> My friend was taken in portal. We're here looking for that friend. No, and also Catherine. Yeah, <laughs> Silas isn't going to do anything. If the, this thing's talking with uh, Medric and not getting violent, then that's good for us. Yep, yep I'm not going to interfere. To be clear, it, it's standing still and occupying all the space in front of the door. It would be very difficult to move beyond it. Um, yep. And I'll end my explanation with, uh, by the way, where are we? 
We just step through this portal. We just kind of showed up, ended up here. <laughs> and why can't I remember off the top of my head the actual name I gave this place, which is uh, annoying. Because it would answer. Um, it's been a while. It, it has, and this was stuff I wrote quite a while ago. Ah, there we go. Identity ambiguous. You will need to state your sponsor. You find yourselves in the sanctum of resonance. Visitors are welcome, if sponsored. Please state your sponsor. Uh, Tozak Riva? Sponsor unrecognized. Cathron? Sponsor unrecognized. Ignis. I'm, I'm blanking on his name. Dude who sent us through the portal with the book. Start with a T. Ah. Karen, something like that. It's in my notes. <laughs> uh, Our characters would know the name because it's only been an hour or so. Yeah, <laughs> it's only been a while. Yeah. Um, why don't we do a, a quick history roll just to see who's the first to remember? It's not going to be me because my history is minus one. Tassar. Tassar, yes. I figured somebody would have it in their notes. Also, you rolled a 23 on your history roll, so... I rolled a <laughs> 2, which means I got a 1. I, as I <laughs> pressed the button, I wasn't even reading my notes. I was like, I pressed the button, and I was like, wait a second. Name ambiguous. Please state full name. I'll ask Dudek, uh, do you know Tassar's full name by any chance? I don't think he gave it. I met you at the same time everyone else did, but... Uh... Tassar Douche Nozzle. <laughs> name unrecognized. No, I don't think he gave us the his full name. No, he didn't. We really don't have an answer for this guy. Well, I, I could try to reach towards him across the plane. There's no guarantee it would A, reach him, and B, that he would answer us, but... Uh, I'll just, just answer. He didn't give us his full name, but he gave us these, and I'll, I'll show the pendant thing. Uh, it reaches out a hand. Since uh, Medric is kind of in front, the hand is in front of you. But it is sort of looking beyond you to see the item that uh, Annie is holding. I'll step forward. You place I'll an intent. It, it lowers its hand yep. down to be of suitable light. Um, as the item sets down in its hand, you actually notice the crystal start to glow a little bit on the inside. And it brings it up to hold it in front of its face. You have been granted visitor status. And hands it back. Do not deviate. Deviation will be treated with... Retribution. And it just turns and starts walking away. Wait, deviate from where? The rules, as you hear it call from down the hallway. Is there a rule book or something? Or Education may be found in the Hall of History. Cool, thanks. And its voice well, is let's look echoing the Hall behind. of History, I guess. <laughs> well, I'm glad he wasn't hostile. I was kind of scared for a sec. <laughs> And it seems to have left taken you alone. Seems pretty big. You hear it uh, uh, sort of clanking for a while, and then it gets a little quieter, and then completely silent as it's apparently found where it's going to go. 
Sanctum of Residence. Do I know anything? Do I know anything about this? Like, have the teachings of Ignis ever mentioned that? Um, you can roll me a history roll, but it's going to be hard. So unless I get a twenty, I'm going to botch this. Nope, oh, nine. <laughs> I mean, the term sanctum usually means a place which is of importance, usually a place which is safe. Resonance, I mean, maybe it's got good, uh, you know, like an echo chamber or something. You do know that there is a choir spot in the uh, volcano in which the center point of Ignis's temple exists, where uh, even if it's only one person uh, singing, their voice can resonate a hundred times. And when you have a whole choir singing, then it seems to multiply it even more and can actually physically move you with their voice, but that seems kind of far-fetched. Hey, Silas, you play music. Does the name Sanctum of Resonance mean anything to you? Not really. It's probably more like a mystical resonance. Yeah, okay. probably. But, uh, we, uh, we might want to uh, head off and find this, uh, well, whatever it is we're supposed to find here because uh, we've only got a limited amount of time with these things. Yeah. Yep. And we have to not deviate, or if we deviate, we have to do it quietly. We, we should find whatever, what do you say, the Hall of Histories? Mm hmm I wonder if that's where it was going. Well, the hallway only goes one way, so... I'll just follow. We might as well head that way. Okay. Again, kind of keeping in initiative order. Oops, sorry. Um, so just, just so that the explorations happen and give me a t chance to actually describe what you're moving through, that sort of thing. Okay. Who's um, first? Since you're in the front of the door, we'll just say you're going first. I'll turn this corner. Uh, and similar to what I described before, um, it is a long hallway that kind of turns and twists. Uh, you notice that there are these alcoves, which one of them is right beside you, uh, in which there used to st sit some kind of statue. Most of the statues that you'll find in here you, you think were probably no more than busts, but others are, are uh, one or two are full body, or would represent enough stone to be a full body maybe a little bit larger than life, it's hard to gauge because right now they look like they're in piles of rocks. As you stand there, you also notice just up ahead of you uh, the small glint of more of the mechanical spiders. They stop at the end of the hallway, they seem to see you, and they stop. Hey, don't, don't worry. Look, look, look at my hands, no, no fire. Yeah, sorry um, about earlier, by the way. Uh, Dudek will move next. You guys can move Dudek and uh, Gosh yourselves. Dudek's I'll move behind Medric. So again, we're kind of keeping to initiative order. So Dudek and then Silas and then Annie. Oh, okay. Again, just to keep the explorations from being like five people go off in five different directions and I'm trying to explain things. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Silas will stop here and then let any pass. Okay, who's going to move Dudek? Because you guys can move Dudek. He's basically under your, your command at this point. Same with Gosh. Gosh comes up a bit later. Dudek's up next. Uh, Trying to move him? All right, so yeah. the Dudek is behind Silas? Sure. Okay. okay. Well, I don't want the NPCs to be in the back, so I'll, I'll tell Gosh to go in front of me and then follow along. Well, put Gosh behind you. He'd be a useful uh, ambush detector. Yeah, but I'll survive ambush detection better than he will. Yeah. And he's kind of our translator. <laughs> yeah, he's translated some of the stuff, but we could do deck too. Um, we'll lead on. Back around to the front, Medric, you are once more facing off against these spiders. They seem to be 
suspicious of you, or cautious at the very least. I'll make sure I'm not. Well, I'm not. I'm not holding any weapons right now because it, it feels like a non-hostile spot. But I'll just get down, get down on one knee to make to like prove to them. It's like, look, I'm not gonna hurt Rosie again. You know? Okay. They slowly move in your direction, crawling along, getting very, very mm-hmm. close. I'll get out of their way. And at the last minute, crawl into the alcove and seem to be starting to pick through the stone. Make a perception check. Perception. Okay, I actually have a decent score on this. Wow. Gee, not 20s today. Nice. Hmm. Um, It's either 20s or 1s. Yeah, you notice that they are, are rearranging the stone. It does seem to have been a bust with uh, a uh, what looks like possibly an elven uh, uh, of an elven person. You can you notice one of the ears uh, that's still intact um, seems to it's broken at the very end, but it does seem to have the the, the longer stretched out view of an of an elf. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's the glint of metal deep within that seems to be slightly wrapped around what would have been the forehead of this being. And they seem to be pulling the stone into a pile, not really reassembling it. And you can see uh, that metal uh, is like a band across the forehead. It um, looks untarnished and unblemished over the years and resembles a... A band of metal, a curved band of metal, I guess it would be a circlet. Mm-hmm. Silas will turn on his magic vision. Uh, do you think grabbing that circlet would count as deviating? Um, as soon Probably. as you activate the, the detecting of magic, it does glow blue with, uh, I believe it's a red magic. It would be qualified as evocation. Huh. Say, well, it's magical. Might be a blasting thing or something. Or create fire. Something like that. As you're going to stand in there, Dudek is going to move a little bit beyond you just to look down the hallway. I'll slowly reach towards the circlet. Do the spiders do anything? Or... They don't seem to react at the moment. I'll reach even closer. They're busy about their work. You see that they work as a colony. Um, They are most definitely made of metal. uh, And they are slowly kind of sorting through the rocks. Um, You notice that there's some gems they've actually uncovered. May have been embedded in what looked like a necklace around the neck, although embedded in the stone. Mm -hmm. I'll touch the circlet. Do they do anything? They stop moving. Retreat my hand. They return back to their work. Yeah, Dudek, do you think it's safe to pick that up? Or? I mean, does it count as tomb robbing if no one's been alive for a long time? Or, or does, it, does it just count as salvage, I suppose? It looks as though everything's been destroyed along this way. It's like somebody purposely tried to erase whatever history was here. I also hold up the hand that has the ring and says, maybe I can pick it up for you. Go for it. Uh, Just be careful, though. mm, uh, He'll lean in and basically just slowly move his hand towards it as though to take it and just look at what the spiders are doing. They continue their work if you're not touching it. They don't seem to change what they're doing. Makes hey. the exact same reaction they had from uh, from Medric, though. He'll touch it. Okay. You're wearing the ring? Yep. And it's attuned? Yo, yeah. Uh, the ring flashes a blue as they stop. Um, they seem to all... Their little eyes also flash a blue in response. And then they continue their work. You have a hold of it. I will retrieve it. It does indeed look to be a circlet of some kind of magic. 
looks like it's made out of uh, fine silver and gold. It looks as though it should have been bent and bruised under all the rocks that are there, but uh, is unharmed in an imperfect shape. Hmm. Um, I can try to identify it at some point, but maybe we want to make sure this area is safe before I go using magic. Yeah, that's probably a good, a good idea. idea. You might want to keep the circle out of sight too, just in case. Just in case it's yeah, he's gonna put it in a bag. deviating. Okay, just make a note that you have that circlet, and we can circle yep. back around to that at some point potentially. Circle um, back around to that. As you uh, as you stow it, um, there is the the lowest of sounds. It feels as though the walls, the floor, everything vibrates violently for a second. Uh, It seems to crescendo, and then there's this long, lingering after effect. And then a sound kind of is accompanying it, but it's a dull, almost roar. Hmm. Is that supposed to Is happen? Like a creature roar, or a roar of moving water, or tumbling stones? It's very, very vague. I'll allow perception checks if you have anything that helps for hearing, or for tactile sense, then you can use those to make a bonus. Would... Is it within 10... If it's within 10 feet, I have... I do have blind sight so I can detect where something's coming from. This, I'll give you for free. This is not near you. It seems like the entire okay. structure has vibrated. Okay. Um, from your perspective, Silas, it's, it's really impossible to tell. There's almost no details left. It's the kind of thing where it's almost the hearsay of a hearsay of sound. Uh, 24 perception. But Medric, um, it does not resemble an animal's sound. It does not resemble music. It's more jagged than that. The, the best analogy you can think of is like a sharp explosion okay. that lingers slightly afterwards. Still not quite sure what it is because there's almost no evidence to identify it right now, but you can rule out it being an animal. You can rule out it being, for example, a call for reveille or any any sort of military call. It doesn't have any structure similar to that. And in a few seconds later, it happens again, but much more faint. Hmm. You suspect that whatever it's happening, wherever you are, there's enough thick stone between you and it that the sound itself is almost not transmitting, but because everything is being affected by it, it's actually the structure itself which is sort of vibrating. Uh, I mean, this place could be falling apart. So we better get Uh, to the Hall of History as quickly as we can then. Uh, Silas will keep his magic sight on as we go, just to keep an eye on things. Okay. We'll keep moving forward. I'll turn the corner. All right. Dudek is close behind me, I guess. Yeah, Dudek is examining the most, the closest, uh, look, examining both the wall and the closest uh, broken statue. Um, Mm -hmm. He's running his fingers over the wall and kind of pointing out that there, there was once runes and a dense amount of information captured here, but it's all been almost rubbed away. I can't tell if it's deliberate or just the passage of time, but it's almost as though it was meant to be forgotten. Odd. Maybe it has something to do with that god, that god he raised. Perhaps. What? 
you cut out of it. You, you cut out of it there. Oh, all he really says is perhaps. Okay. Um. Hmm. Oh, only one of my eyes has vision. That's annoying. <laughs> I'm blind in one eye. I don't like that. <laughs> Do I keep going, or I'm just like question to the to the DM? Do I have to wait until everybody else catches up to keep going? Or? That's the general intent, just so that okay. as we encounter new places, I don't have to describe them multiple times. Or um, I'm I'm just following along. This has a lot of magic things, so I'm keeping the rear, making sure that nothing. Yeah, pops I'm just out. kind of following the others. Okay. All right, I'll slowly creep up to the next um, path to my right. So from there, you can see, um, interesting, okay, I'm going to move my eyes. Uh, you can see two things. One, that the end of the hall is not far, oh, thank you, the end of the hall is not far. And you can see that, again, consistently, a number of these statues. And now you can kind of make out that the walls themselves have sort of been uh, not only eroded, but seem to have also been taken out with some some force. Uh, removing whatever writing there had been. Uh, in fact, uh, I will reveal that you all come to understand, but this is indeed the Hall of History that they were talking about, which is now completely missing. Uh, the room over in front of you, you see um, cylinders that are embedded in the wall, but some of them are slightly coming out. They have a, a, a swirling glue, uh, sorry, swirling uh, <laughs> glue? No, swirling blue energy uh, kind of turning from within. And you can also see that the floor itself is what looks like metal, um, somewhat eroded, but still looks solid uh, and with gaps in it. Um, I'm trying to think of the, the word, but essentially it's a grated floor. Okay. Um, How big are the gaps? Uh, just in, a couple of inches. Okay. Easily, you're not going to fall through them. All right, so um, it's not difficult terrain. Great. <laughs> on the far wall, you can see very thin um, slits in the wall, which kind of resemble windows. Um, and you do, in fact, see a... Um, with some sort of flat plane that looks very, very dark. Uh, now, in time with the sound and the feeling, um, you can now pick up a flash of light beyond those, um, beyond those slits in the far wall. Hmm. Uh, you also see a second uh, entrance not that far away. And the blue glow that comes from within seems to extend out both entrances. These have no doors on them, by the way, but they do have stairs going down. I'll, I'll walk to the other entrance to see if I can pick up anything like from the walls that's not erased. Okay. Uh, Is there anything near the end of the hall? Or? Make a... Huh. I don't really want to rely on perception. Make an investigation roll. Aw, oh, man. That's like minus one and not plus one. And not plus five. Nine. <laughs> yeah, it looks as though they were not only thorough enough to try to destroy these, but um, they, they started breaking apart even smaller pieces such that all you can really find is the edge of a rune uh, in a language you don't recognize. Um, but there is a sense of... I'll give you. I'll give you this. There's a sense of urgency, uh, as though this was done in a hurry. You can read into that whatever you like. You do see that in the far in the room there. You can actually see the large uh, humanoid you encountered before, kind of standing up against the wall, and you can see a small amount of of sort of sparking blue energy coming from just behind it. It's standing with its back to you facing out, facing the other way. Uh, you'll also notice uh, 
You can just about see, yeah, there's a door just to the, actually there's two doors. And I gotta use the right mouse. Uh, off to the right hand of the map, which would be your left hand as you're standing there. Anybody else, everybody else moving up? Yep. I'll point out to them, and just to like make our presence known to the humanoid, it's like, uh, yeah, our guardian friend is here. Doesn't seem to be actively moving. Um, you can kind of see a, a, a red nodule across a, a, on the wall, which is essentially what it's connected to. I couldn't get exactly what I wanted in this space, but uh, the red nodule essentially is a small, similar to what you saw in the travel room, where there was a nodule of, of bluish energy. This one's of red that sends out white sparks, essentially uh, connecting to the back of this thing. Um, in this room, let me see here. Uh, on the far left side, there is a pillar, which atop it seems to have a uh, onyx stone, which seems to have some runes on it. Uh, you can see more of the those small nozzles here. No pattern on the wall this time to indicate what they might do. Uh, and on that far left, you also note what looks to be... Uh, probably wooden cabinets. So on that, in this case, precisely where the turn order sign is, but I'll move that out of the way. Mm -hmm. But on that side, you'll see there's a, a, a stone on a pillar, black stone on a pillar there, and then small cabinets that are kind of lining that room. There's the three cylinders that seem to be in various stages away from the wall and two doors on the right. The, the humanoid figure does not seem to react at all when you enter the room. I'll move like close-ish to him, like wherever I'm standing now. Yeah, the uh, you know. hair on your arm starts to stand up every time there's a spark that's given. It's, okay. it's not noiseless, but it's very, very quiet. Um, and it contrasts, it contrasts very heavily with the sort of rumbling uh, that the entire room goes through. This is happening sporadically. And again, you're seeing uh, flashes of light now through the windows to the south. I'll ask the Guardian, is it okay if we look around? It does not. I'll take that as a yes. I'm just going to go look out the window, okay? Not touching anything. Not deviating. I assume that most of the stuff you described, Mark, is giving off magic. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot about your, your thing. Yes, so... No. Uh, yes, the three pillars on the far side of the room are definitely giving off magic. Uh, I forget the kind of magic right now, but uh, it would probably be... Uh, what's the term? I, I don't think it's evocation, but you, I'll, I'll, I'll say it's healing type magic. Um, yeah. That's evocation yeah, that's coming from the red spot. Uh, it would be... Uh, oh, I've got I've to look up my, my list of magics, but protective magic is coming off of the wooden uh, lockers, essentially. Uh, and then there is something, the stone at the end is magical as well. That one would be, uh, I'll say conjuration. Not quite conjuration, but sort of. Are all of you popping into the room? Dude, I guess yeah, I'm definitely coming. looking at the, at, well, everything. I put them in a wall just now by accident. I'm looking at the window, or one of the windows, or one of the slits. 
he has become one with the building. He's never coming home. <laughs> there All is right, no saving him. I accidentally him. grabbed the map. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. There we go. Uh, Gosh is actually still in the hallway. He's looking at very closely at all of the bits and pieces that are there. Um, starting with Medric, you're taking a look out the window. Mm -hmm. You see beyond this what looks like an open courtyard. Uh, there is a pillar about five feet in height, which you can probably just make out from where you are. I think you can almost see it there. Um, oops. Okay. Uh, so like pillar. Yeah, so this you can like just big... make out the, the pillar uh, in the middle of, of big open space. You oh, see at one. least one of those clusters of metallic spiders moving uh, around the area. Uh, you can also just make out another tower, it looks like, just across the way, just over here which again has okay. similar uh, slit-like windows and there's a blue glow ca being cast from inside. As you watch and your attention is drawn to the, again, east on this map, uh, you note that the land ends and this vast uh, shadowy black void expanse uh, is seen beyond. In the flash of a moment, what resembles lightning other than two different things um, one it seems to have a glow of darkness around it the effect I would describe to you as a player is if you've ever seen the, the representation of the dark saber in uh, Star Wars yeah it's that kind of glowy black that's what okay. the lightning looks like it seems to crawl across the edge of this space and then you see in response a sort of bluish lightning that seems to match it point for point in a curved dome that seems to follow the edge of the land. Uh, the lightning's source, the blue lightning source, seems to be the pillar. That's about all the detail you can make out from there. Hey, Dudek, can you make anything out of this? And I'll just describe what I saw. Although uh, he can probably see it for himself, too. Well, he's, he's currently examining the, the other thing, trying to figure out what this this red thing is at the moment. I uh, could make uh, a hat or a brooch. <laughs> um, he will sort of trundle over to take a look himself and start to look at it. In the meantime, Silas, are you taking a look at the, the other things? Um, yeah, he'll... Hmm. He'll look at the... Uh, yeah, no, he really wants to look at the uh, the obsidian orb, or onyx orb, whichever it was. Okay. Yeah, onyx is a little bit closer. Um, it's more of a dull black. You can make out that there is a, uh, a a pattern of writing across the surface of it. As you move your hand by it, the ring actually glows somewhat. And you can make out that there is a... Uh, essentially, it would be a three-fingered hand print on the very top of it. Interesting. I'm going to put a hand on it, the one that has the ring. Okay. Let's see what it does. Very, I'm a poke it with a stick. Bye. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, I'm gonna look up the exact effects here. Let's see. Okay. Um, you feel as though you can activate it. it. Takes an action to activate. I'm assuming you go ahead and do so. Certainly. Okay. There is a blast of wind that seems to emanate from the bottom of the pillar. It emanates outward and seems to engulf you. All of you watch as this, uh, this bluish green uh, wind seems to whirl around Silas for a second. 
uh, and then you feel it kind of pushing through you, pushing through your clothing, everything, until finally it just swirls and then retreats back in the box, uh, back in the bottom, and you feel dirt free. Your clothing is almost as though it has been freshly washed and pressed. Wait. Um, you also feel like if you had been uh, covered in any sort of dirt or oil or anything like that, it would have been removed. Hmm. You've see, heard of such things. They're not so common in where you're from. But in the bigger cities, there are public cleansing stones. Hmm. Well, that was amazing. Is it part of the, like, you said it was on a pillar? That's right. Is it part of the pillar or just sitting on the pillar? I'll try to lift it. Uh, it, it looks as though it's the stone is kind of embedded in a uh, a basin on the very top of the pillar. It does feel heavy. Uh, it would be movable. It's not attached to the floor. So is the movable part, is that the basin or the pillar? Uh, the basin. Oh, sorry, the, the pillar itself. It, it does feel like the, the orb essentially is captured within the lip of the basin. So it can move freely within, and you're not sure why it would move, but you could try to figure that out later. But it, you can't really pull the stone out unless you broke the basin. Yeah, and this is like a big five-foot pillar, so it's not something we can haul around, really. No. Okay. Poorly is not in this campaign. Either. Sorry, I should have <laughs> said five-foot. This should really be about a, about a two-foot pillar. Or, sorry, three-foot pillar. So you do have to lean down a bit to get to it. But it also puts it within range that uh, someone short could use it. So, mm. Mm. well, I tell the others um, uh, this uh, seems to be a cleaning stone. I'm feeling very clean. Same, freshly showered and laundered. Um, the effect was limited to Silas. So, oh, okay, I thought but, it was everybody. No, just Silas. But he he, he does look remarkably spiffy right now. Hmm. Well, did it fix any tears in my hmm. clothes or anything, or did it just clean them? Uh, like, I'm assuming I had some wear and tear on my clothes. It did not repair any clothes, at least okay. not in the current configuration. Yeah. Um, Neat. Well... Yeah, I could probably use that. Any household could use it. I will use the cleansing stone. <laughs> Stias okay. will uh, go stand over by the uh, the uh, cabinets. All right. After after a second uh, of of binding to it, uh, of of activating it, uh, once again the bluish green wind whirls around uh, Medric and yeah, cleaned and pressed. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we need one of those in, in the Temple of Ignis. Is Annie the next to? <laughs> You've discovered yes. the Mondra magic. Like, like of all the stuff, it's basically the shoe shiner, which is the most interesting <laughs> magic item I put here. But yes, one, uh, easily enough. Uh, it, uh, and you feel like not only is the surface of your clothing cleaned, you you feel like you're you're wearing freshly laundered clothes. Your skin is perfectly clear. Uh, any of the wounds that you had, which were there have been a little blood splatter or whatever, all of that blood is gone. Again, it does not repair your clothing, but it does feel nice. like it is a thorough shower. Um, and actually... Cleanest I've felt in a while. <laughs> actually, any of all of them, you would know that... You'd know exactly what this experience is like because there are several of these installed within your castle. Yup. Uh, they don't look quite as um, dour as this one does. This is probably a custom build, but... Um, and Silas, you, the others did not have a ring, and they were still able to activate this, so clearly it's not it's meant for everyone. But it did react to you somewhat. And, it, and the ring itself did glow when you were close to it. Mm. Standing in front of those... Uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, we can wait. Um... Yeah, no, Silas will look at the cabinets next. So looking up close, they are clearly made of of solid wood. 
Uh, they've got a beautiful sheen on the outside as if they've been polished. Uh, they have rings of runes around them, and they are in pristine condition. Unlike everything else here, which looks kind of run down or worn out, these look like they are in perfect condition. They are emitting uh, protective magic, so these were meant to hold. Uh, if, you try the, if you try them, they do appear to be locked, however. Yeah. Well, Silas is going to try something because uh, the ring, the charges for the ring could be used for other stuff, like with the little locked box and such. Mm -hmm. He's going to try expending one of the ring's charges into the cabinet. And see okay. If it'll unlock. Um, just kind of from a distance, or are you looking for a place where the ring could be inserted, or...? Uh, he'll go touch, like, whatever knob or handle there is there. Okay. Unless there's something obvious that looks like, uh, like a gemstone embedded in it or something. There does appear to be some sort of, uh, a key space, or, or a, a keyhole. Okay, yeah, he'll put the ring, uh, like, press the ring against the keyhole and... Okay. Expend the charge. Out. Uh, and sure enough, uh, this locker opens. Uh, there is a flash of blue, and the locker comes open in your grasp. Sweet. Um, this is why I hang out with you guys. <laughs> uh, inside the locker, um, you do find what looks like a uh, heavy cloak made of heavy homespun material not particularly fancy looking it's kind of gray uh, there's also a uh, pouch uh, roll uh, 3d10 please twenty one nice uh, the, the pouch is heavy. Inside you find there are 21 gems of approximately 100 gold pieces each. Very, a variety of gems. We can roll at some point if we want to determine which gems they are. Um, there are four cabinets. Uh, otherwise you find in this one, what well, looks to be a decent bow, a long bow, a quiver of arrows. Nothing shines magical about any of that, though. Did the cloak come up as magical, or just... Regular? It did not. Okay. I mean, just I wouldn't say no to more arrows. <laughs> yeah, Silas will say, hey, arrows. Uh, yeah, there's a quiver inside. The Guardian. Roll a um, 46. Yep, it contains 20 arrows. Good quality. They do seem to be aged. You're not sure how strong they're going to be, but... The quiver is kind of looking a bit rough for wear. It's all good. I, I never say no to extra arrows, and I, I would just put them in, into my quiver. The longbow is unstrung, but that's probably because they put it away. Um, Medric, you had something you wanted to talk to the Guardian, or...? I was gonna ask, uh, uh, sh should we ask the Guardian if, it, if this counts as deviating if we take this stuff? It hasn't reacted. I mean, it ha yeah, it, ha it hasn't attacked us, so... I'll ask it. Uh, excuse me, can we take this stuff? The sparking behind it stops and it slowly turns its head to face you. Please restate the question. Can we take the things in the cabinet? The stored items are for those of the Argenti Sagax. Dudek, that's you. Hmm? And he's still looking out the window, kind of... You see him counting every once in a while, as if he's trying to figure out if there's a frequency going on or not. He seems fascinated by this dark lightning and the meeting black... Uh, meeting blue lightning that's happening. Hmm. 
Um, Silas will hold up the hand and show, showing the uh, construct the ring and says, may I take these? Your ring appears to signify you as a member of their Genti Sagax. Nice. Okay, so, so Silas does the picking up of things. Dudek has a ring too, right, I think? He does. Okay. Uh, so that was all the cabinets? That was one cabinet. There are four. Okay. Silas will start checking the others. Okay, again, an expenditure each time. Um, I've only got one charge left in the ring. Hmm. They do that. Do you have? Do you know uh, any other way to open these up, or does your ring have any magic left in it to open them? I suppose it might. And as he moves over to stand beside the uh, cabinets, his ring also starts to glow a little bit. Uh, it appears I have some. Um. Well, uh, Sai says, I only have a little magic left in mine. I'll use it to open one of these. Could you open the other two? I can certainly try. Okay. Was Silas there a trick to it? Uh, Silas has described what he did. Uh, as a, basically, like, the ring has charges that can be used for certain things. He And it'll just show he just put the ring against the... Uh, the uh, keyhole and uh, used up a charge of the magic. Okay. And now Silas has none. Hopefully the rumbling goes glue goes louder from uh, outside, and just as you open another one of the cabinets, one of the two doors, the one at the top, just sort of flies open. Let's see if I can indicate that. It is haunted. The door opens up. G -g -g -ghost. Now you can hear the full <laughs> strength of the explosions outside. It is deafening. Um, you also see just outside the door is a pile of these mechanical spiders. At this point, with it open, um, you can't even have conversation. You also note there's a sort of wind, but it's a wind that feels like the howling of a thousand desperate voices and that the rumbling of the thunder persists all the time, even beyond the flashes. Through that door, you can also see the barrier that seems to hold it at bay. Every once in a while, the barrier sparks a little bit and seems to be a little bit dimmer than it was before. Uh, before you in the second cabinet, um, you are taken aback for a, for a moment as you think you found a small humanoid standing in the cabinet. In the dim glow of the, of the light, what others would notice, though, is that this humanoid has no face. And for you, with the eyesight that you have, and in between the flashes, which make it difficult to kind of pinpoint, uh, you realize it is a mannequin, halfling-sized mannequin. Magical? Mm. The mannequin is not magical, but it too wears a circlet on its head and wears a cloak, both of which do appear to be magical. Ah, I see. It's a, it's a mannequin being used as a mannequin. Yeah, it's an actual <laughs> mannequin mannequin. Totally normal. It's okay. a dire mannequin. So there uh, seems to be a halfling or a gnome who owns this place. Or at least one that worked here. And they're probably equal opportunity employers. Uh, yeah, Silas will bag those. Okay, make, the, make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think that's it. Oh, no, it's not his worst, but it's close. Oh, <laughs> but that is most definitely the worst. Yep, uh, that, is, that is a natural one. Okay. Right. If I can find my cursor here.
Ooh, lucky roll. You take five force damage as a burst of wind explodes from the mannequin, throwing you back and actually into the uh, the statuesque humanoid. Uh, the sparking stops once more, and it turns its head to look down on you. So you are knocked back here. Yep. Look up. Ow, hello. It would appear that you are not authorized for this locker. My apologies. It doesn't seem uh, to take any additional action. It seems satisfied yeah. that... Well, Silas yeah, will get back fuck around again. <laughs> okay, well, I guess that one's off limits. Uh, you figure you did trigger a trap of some kind. Okay. Silas looks over at Annie and says, what are the chances that that was the only trap on it? I mean, I can take a look at it. We... So an investigation roll to try to figure out what the trap is like. I mean, the Dudek is sort of holding his hand over one of the doors going, should I really do this then? Yeah. Uh, Looks perfectly yeah, fine. I said, uh, yeah. I mean, usually, I don't know. Doesn't seem like there's anything else to me, but what do I know? I don't know magic. Okay. Um, well, I, this didn't seem to be a magic trap, or at least if it was, it wasn't the one I could sense. Silas will reach out again. Uh, to be clear, in the process of being thrown across the, the, the room, you did feel that was a magical effect, but okay. it wasn't apparent from looking at it. So okay. it, it, you can draw whatever conclusion you want to from that, yeah. but essentially there was a magical effect. If someone else wants to try, they... Ooh, no. Nobody else can except maybe Dudek. Uh, it should be okay to open the door, Dudek. Uh, I didn't get uh, zapped until I tried to touch a thing. You see Dudek take uh, a, a, a wide-legged stance and kind of set himself in front of the door and extend his hand towards the door, almost as though he's slow-motion punching the door and places his ring across across the door, and it clicks and unlocks. Well, that wasn't so bad. Inside this locker, uh, you see only one thing. It appears to be a long sword. Uh, a pretty long size. Uh, very slender blade, at least from what you can see, because it's in its sheath. Uh, the sheath is of a dark red leather with beautiful lettering up, up the side. Uh, the sword hilt is round. The actual sword itself is slightly curved. And it, uh, it does have a pommel which ends in a dark red I like gem set into it it is definitely magical mm. um, anybody who takes a look at it can make a history roll we'll do it that way great I'll have a look at it my history rolls are shit but whatever I mean 11 yeah I get a 6 I think it's a oh. sword it looks like a sword um, 17. All right. Uh, Dudek will take a look at it as well, but Annie does have the sense of it here. Just make sure I got Dudek's up. Uh, but essentially, uh, Annie, you look at the sword, and as part of your training growing up, what you were, were taught... Um, in part because they wanted to make sure you knew what the world was like, in part because your family deals uh, with uh, different nations and different kingdoms. Um, yeah, let's make his roll, see what he gets. Uh, oh, 
Okay, it was a natural one, but rolled over to a 13, so he's got a, a dirty 20. Uh, but Annie, you recognize this as from the Northern Hobgoblin Kingdom. They are an isolationist kingdom. Um, so they are they, the actual culture inside is a little bit foreign to you, but they are said to have extraordinary amounts of honor as the core tenant of their entire culture. Um, they are ruled over by an emperor um, who maintains very, very strict uh, boundaries. This is the, I believe it's the Karavankan Empire. And this is absolutely a Karavankan style sword. What it would be doing here, you're not quite sure because again, the hobgoblins tend to be isolationist um, and the Argenti Sagex do not. And again, it is a magical sword. Or at least appears to be. What would that be doing here? Hobgoblins usually don't tend to... to go around anywhere. Maybe it was taken from them and brought here? Possibly. Maybe the Guardian would know. Yeah, where did this come from? I'll ask him. Are you going to uh, pick up the sword and show it to him? He's across the room, so... No, I'll just point towards the sword. Okay. It's Karavankin. Uh, I just gotta go to my list of names here. They just tend to not... associate with anyone. It is the sword of Durgma Kasuke. Sort of. Durgma Kasuke. Is this Durgma Kasuke still alive? I do not know the current status of Kasuke. Hmm. When's the last time he was here? Calculating. I do not have a frame of reference for your omission time. In local time, approximately 100,000 cycles. Right, uh, where? Right, you, you you said we were in the sanctum of uh, residence. Okay. Uh, Dudek, do you have any idea how to translate that to uh, or convert that to Omisha time? I'm not sure how they counted time here. There's no sign of daylight or nighttime. No stars, other than some pins of light that I can see beyond the storm, but. Honestly, I have no idea that they'd count time. Time clearly passes, I, I, but I, I don't know. There may be a time keeping here. There might be something in the book. Okay. Let's now, check it Silas, out. Silas will pull out the book. Okay. Um, as usual, when the book is pulled out, you have the fully active ring. A column of blue light forms below the book, holding it upright, kind of like its own portable pedestal. Um, and you notice maybe a little bit more than you had before that there are definitely pages missing from this book. Now, opening up the book normally without this activ activation, um, it just looks like it's stone slates inside. When you open it up with the activation, there are additional pages that are there. Uh, but even now, you start to notice that some of them are missing. Um, make a, let's call it an arcana roll to try to navigate your way through this book, to try to find what you're looking for. It has dozens, if not hundreds, of pages. Natural 20. Nice. <laughs> well, there you go. 27 uh, total. You start to think about time and its importance, and you flip towards the back of the book. 
and indeed there are several pages which seem to outline uh, different cycles of time uh, until you actually see uh, the, the name the sanctum of resonance doesn't have any description of, of the place it just has the sanctum of resonance and you can see the the wheels within wheels within wheels of the way this is related one of the wheels this reminds you in some ways of the orrery which told you about the the uh the relative positioning of the planes uh, and it seems something similar to that trying to calibrate the relative positioning of the planes uh, and as you as you look at it, it actually starts to shift as though it is a real representation of time as it is now. The one thing you notice right away is that the the circle on the right, and these are overlapping circles that kind of shift and turn. Some of them are more oval in shape. Some of them are, are a little bit more perfect circles. The unusual oval on the, on the right, which represents this plane, uh, moves very very slowly. Whereas you see the circle which represents Omatia, which tends to go far out and disconnect from this particular circle, seems to move a lot mm -hmm. quicker. And from that you interpret the idea that the relative positioning of these two right now means that time is, fast, is moving faster on Omatia than it is here. Um, yeah. The actual calculation of what exactly 100,000 uh, cycles would be uh, will take you a bit more time and that'll be an actual, uh, I think, an, in an intelligent check, but I'm trying to think of which of the skills oh. would be appropriate. Silas is actually less interested in that and more interested in telling the others that uh, time is passing in Omatia a lot faster than it is here. Uh, we need to get through here fast. Yep. Um, He's going to go over and he's going to take a look at that second cabinet, the one that had the halfling uh, mannequin. mannequin with mm -hmm. the circlet and the cloak. And he's going to study it to see if he can find any, find if, excuse me, if there's any magical traps on it. Okay. And uh, well, while Silas does that, I'll ask the guardian, uh, who owns the uh, mannequin and stuff on it? Let me see here. I knew I should have put all my names in the same space. <laughs> uh, that would have been too easy. What that do you would mean? have been that would have been the, the exact appropriate thing to do, and of course I did not. Uh, where are you? Uh, <laughs> pardon me while I search, searching through my memory. Uh, Buffer. That is the locker <laughs> of Delsarin Ravalar. Ravalar? Yeah, I'm putting these names in the chat so yeah. you can find them there too. Uh, make an arcana check for. Oh, you did. Uh, 19s. Yep. Uh, yes, there appears to be a rune which is hidden by the circlet itself. So the moment you pulled the circlet out, the rune got exposed to the air and went off. Hmm. And, w and as soon as you kind of poke around, you can't really see much of the rune, but you can see just the edge of it. It's still active. Okay. Hmm. Well, if I was to quickly grip these real hard then even if it knocks me away they will come, they might come with me hmm can I try to disarm the rune uh, how would you attempt to disarm the magical rune well we have uh, tinkering tools and a pretty high arcana lore modifier uh, you can certainly try it. I will caution you that a failure will have it go off, but you will make uh -huh. your your save with advantage because you're aware that the effect is there. Yeah, this is. 
kind of all the uh the most far as he can get on this anyways he'll give it one try okay uh, so um i'll say i'll give you a, a I'll give you advantage as a synergy bonus between the tinker, tinkering tools and Arcana, and you're aware of the, the trap. Yeah. Uh, it is going to be uh, tricky to do, so I'm going to say it's a 17 difficulty. Okie dokie. See what I get. 24. There you go. Well, okay. So describe exactly how you managed to disarm or disable or otherwise make this trap not go off. Um... With the tinkering tools, because uh, they're, they're, they're actually tinkering tools, even though they can be used as thieves tools, uh, they're very tiny and whatnot. So what he does is uh, kind of uh, works away at the rune where it's embedded in the, uh, the head of the mannequin and just kind of gives it a quick flip so it's now face down against the mannequin. Well, the rune is in the mannequin. Oh, it's burned to the mannequin. Yeah, yeah, it's on the surface uh, of the mannequin. I like the idea so far, but other, aside from that, it should have been clearer before, pardon me. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> there's no rules for how runes actually work. Um, there are in some other books, but I haven't really read those ones yet, so... Well, uh, he, I don't know what he's got with him. I don't have it on there. Um, basically, since the, uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. Um, he, uh, since the, uh, it basically seems to go off if it makes contact with air when the, uh, Hat is removed. Um, he actually takes out uh, those two snuff tins full of wax that he was going to use for key copying earlier, okay. way, way back when. Um, uses some, uh, it basically warms the wax with uh, the, the little do it all magic thing, cantrip, starts uh, with a P. Press the digitation. That's it. Uh, he'll warm that up so it's nice and soft and use the tools to spread the wax over the rune. So that taking the hat off does not expose it to anything. Uh, okay. It's a delicate operation, and you can feel every once in a while the the rune starting to react. You, you, all of you watch as, I don't know if you're paying much attention necessarily, but <laughs> Silas's hair kind of moves back as the little, it starts to emit a little bit of air, but you're managing to, to keep it from being fully exposed. Uh, and you're able to essentially cover the rune on its head. Uh, you discover a similar rune on the shoulder, but yeah, now you're aware. Kind of thing, yeah. yeah, you're aware of it now, so uh, the same approach can be, uh, can be taken. And you now have a magical circlet and a magical cloak. Nice. Cloak. Silas stands up and says, Huh. That wasn't that hard. I should have got into thieving. Um. Shh. Don't point to the guardian. Not thieving. Recovery. Mm -hmm. Yeah the the, yes. the 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 head of the thing sort of swivels in a grating sound looking over it not taking any actions but apparently observing the conversation. So yes, no. When's I... the last time uh Delsaran Revelar was seen? I'll ask him. 100,000 cycles ago. <laughs> when they eloped. <laughs> Run away never to be seen again. I do not have memory of when I last saw Dergma Kasal. Or, sorry. Okay. Dergma Der Kasuki. Sorry. It was the other one, wasn't no, it? Dalsara Del 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 and Revelar. Yep. Um, okay. I look over at Dudek and said, do you want to open the last cabinet? We can at least see what's in it. 
I can try. And with the same sort of caution, he proceeds to push the ring into the, the, the uh, keyhole and then it pops open. Uh, inside appears to be a magical uh, cloak hung on a peg. It looks absolutely gorgeous, but shimmers slightly when you look at it. Hmm. Uh, it'd be illusion magic. You're muted, but it, it's illusion magic. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, Silas is going to do a check for any runes on on the uh this one was just a cloak uh, there wasn't anything else just a cloak on a peg yep okay uh yeah he's <clears throat> he's going to be very cautious and uh yeah search the the inside of the cabinet for runes particularly under the peg uh in case it has one like the last one did um in your search, you do not find any runes. Uh, you do find a note that was wrapped up and put underneath the cloak. The paper is crumbling as you take a look at it. Uh, it is in Elven. Do you speak Elven or read Elven? I don't. I do. So. Nope, I don't. And uh, hand it off he, to, to Annie? Yeah, he'll quickly, care, uh, cautiously hand it off to Annie. Um, like explosive runes. God damn it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that would be cruel. Uh, it's actually a, it's actually a scroll and by reading it you're activating the spell and uh -huh. Yeah, no. Suddenly um, I have no eyebrows. <laughs> uh it's a simple note in Elven. Uh my dearest Nindral for the next party we visit. Signed L E L. Okay. Well, since he didn't find any wounds, he's going to gingerly take the cloak off the pin. Ah, it comes easily off the pin. It does not appear to be trapped. Okay. It it seems to be some sort of meant for for fancy dress. Yeah, it has illusion magic. I'm wondering if it's like that, uh, the cloak that we didn't take when we uh, get out of the haunted house, the one that changes its look based on whatever you want. Anyways. Possibly. In the bag it goes. Um... Yes, we'll have to uh, thank Nindral next time we see them. There's uh -huh. a sudden snap of electricity, and the the red stone goes dim. The humanoid steps forward, charging complete, beginning patrol, and just walks out through the door. Uh, the All right, see you later. The spiders are coming in the meantime. It closes the door um, behind them. And the spiders are advancing across the room, though. Cautiously advancing. Mm. I Silas, get will, way. Silas will wave at them with the hand that has the ring on it. Um, do you guys want me to try to get that sword out of there? It's not my kind of weapon, but it might be something valuable. I'm pretty it sure... It definitely is, considering that hobbit goblins don't really leave... Karavinka. Yeah, and we're, unless a cycle is a second, that guy's been gone so long, I don't think he's coming back for this. Uh, can I make um, some kind of check? Do I Have I had much experience with hobgoblins? Like, just in the military? Because um, is Dirk Kasuke a, a hobgoblin-like name? 
I would say that you'd recognize that as a hobgoblin name. The hobgoblins yeah. are very, very isolationist, so you would not have met many of them. Um, you would have met maybe some traitors. You do not remember serving with any, even in whatever war it was that started just before or ended just before you woke up, essentially. Um, but you can make a... Uh, hmm. Let's call it a history roll. Oh, 19, which means 18. <laughs> yeah. Um, they have a very closed-off culture. You're not even sure that they acknowledge Ignis. Yes, the sun no. is up there in the sky. But as a god, they may or may not accept any gods. Well, it sucks to be them, but, but uh, Dirk Makasuke is a, hob uh, is a hobgoblin name, correct? It is a hobgoblin name, yes. Okay. The Kasuke in particular is, uh, is something you would recognize. Okay, well, Silas is going to uh, inspect the cabinet that has the sword in it, looking for this, basically the same wounds that he found in the, in the second one. Um, and yes. And I will try to guide Silas by giving him guidance. Ah, thank you. And, he and helping him look around. Just find, to find any like hidden wounds or anything that might be like zapping him. Stop that! No. <laughs> okay, so cat aggro. Seven cat aggro. Arcana and a D four three, so a twenty. As you're examining this, there is another one of those loud and seemingly closer uh, bursts of sound and energy. In fact, it lights up the whole room. And after it vanishes, you realize that um, all of the cylinders here uh, have gone dark. Silas flinched when that happened. Uh, okay. Uh, Silas is going to focus on the cabinet. Let me know if our world starts to fall apart or something, please. Will do. Um, yeah, there's no simple on-off for those, unfortunately. Uh, as you look through the cabinet uh, and your own sight allowing you to see consistently despite the rest of the room essentially going dark, um, you do not detect any other signs of runes or anything like that. Uh, okay. it, it appears as though... Hmm. Yeah, no, there's nothing. You don't see any, any signs of anything there. Okay. Uh, everybody stand back just in case. All right. And be ready to revive me if I get knocked out. You got this, bro. Oh, you got guidance again. <laughs> okay, he's he's got gingerly just oh my God. take the sword, lift it up. Okay, make a constitution saving throw, please. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> please let it be poison. Uh, is it magic? I forgot. I've got uh, it is magical. On, I got advantage on saves against magic. Oh, well, that's something to remember. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially now. <laughs> hey. 18. Okay. Team, the guidance doesn't help that though, because it's a save. Because it's a save. Uh, yeah, you flinch a little bit as you as you put your hand close to it, and a small spark of lightning jumps from it to you, but you're strong enough in in mind and body that it does not affect you. Now you I have do, the sword. I, I do, I do scream like a little girl for a second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you probably do notice that there's a little bit of the the tufting of hair, as though he's just received an electrical shock, which technically he has. Yep, his uh, his his dark greenish hair kind of stands on end for a moment. You okay? Yeah. I don't know if that was from the cabinet or the sword. Uh, uh, we'll find out later, I guess. Um, Sounds good. Why is why has everything else gone dark? 
I don't know, but I I don't like the sounds or the looks of this. The looks and the, and the sounds of this. Um, is did the swarm go dark as well? Uh, there's one in the room. Uh, no. Um, it okay. it seems to to move over to where one of those was. Starts to swarm over it, but it does not come back to light. Hmm. Well, check out the cylinder. Um, it appears that whatever electrical power or whatever was inside the swirling energy has completely dissipated. Huh. I wonder, do those like get recharged or something eventually? Or? I don't know. Maybe they were the things protecting this area from that really loud stuff going on outside, and now they're used up. I know that's how my the shield spell in the ring works. Uh, I can only use it so many times, and then it won't protect me anymore. The lightning's probably been going off here for the eternity. Why would it just turn off now? I don't know. Maybe it hasn't been eternity. It might be a new thing. As you're standing there, not far from the window, another bright flash occurs. But this time, Medric, you can see out of the corner of your eye where the blue lightning met the black lightning um, was out in this open space in front of you. Not on the edge where it was before. Yeah, the lightning's coming closer, guys. Okay, yeah, maybe that was uh, something... Um, everyone look at your little amulet thing and see if it's directing us somewhere. I didn't think to check. Because these things were supposed to lead us to stuff. I mean, uh, I'll look at mine. Yeah, each of you make a survival check. All right, I'll look at my amulet. Survival, I think I'm okay at that. Plus two. Eight. Twelve. There's so many shinies, like, who needs survival? <laughs> Unsurpri unsurprisingly, knows what she's doing. is not good at survival. <laughs> um, Annie, yep. uh, what is a moment or an anecdote where Annie was learned how to use a compass properly? Can you think of one? How would she relate this moment back? Probably during, um, basically, how to to act if kidnapped class with Conrova. Okay. <laughs> basically, how to get get out of that situation would be how she would have learned how to use probably use a compass and find my way back home. Okay. So, um, looking at it and kind of thinking of it as a compass, you start to turn around in circles to try to get bearings. Um, two things come to mind, or two things happen essentially much at the same time. There's another one of these bright flashes of dark light outside. And in that mm -hmm. moment, you can kind of sense that whatever directionality had been given to you by, the, by this uh, stone um, spins and twir twirls. And that leads you to remember something else. Being in the lower chamber, the captain's quarters of a ship. The ship is shaking back and forth, rolling with heavy waves, storm battering the windows, shaking everything. A lot of shouting on the top deck. Navigators down there with you. Both of you are staring at the map, trying to figure out which direction to go. You've got the ship's compass, a large one, set right there. And you look at it, and the ship's compass is spinning, unable to get a bearing that, fix, that fixes. There's a groan as the top of the mast snaps. The ship pitches to one side. You slide across the room, catch yourself just in time from being crushed under a massive table, the navigator not quite so lucky, pinned by it, broken arm. 
the windows out front rattle and a rush of water comes streaming in. The cabin floods quickly and you can feel the whole ship going down. You trapped within the captain's cabin. This feels like a memory, but it feels like a memory you don't remember. But there was that big storm. You were on a ship somewhere between here and there, between home and this new land. Did you drown? But as the lightning recedes, fought back by the blue lightning inside, you realize that you can get a fix. When the lightning goes off, the fix is ruined. But from where you stand, it appears to be, uh, from the map orientation, south and west, pointing directly at the other tower you can barely see across the opening, the open, uh, expanse. Okay. You don't suppose there's like an underground route that we can reach that tower with instead of walking outside and getting zapped by lightning? I, I don't think so. Other, I haven't seen any other exits here, so we're probably going to have to hoof it. Do that yep, kind I think of. We're working with what we're working with. Do that kind of squats down. I mean, this is a great, but I have no idea where it goes. Do I see the guardian outside? Uh, you see him in in flashes, uh, moving around. Zapped? You do see him get struck by that dark lightning. Okay. It does not seem to react so much as just keep moving. It's knocked a little bit off, off its course, as if by the force, but does not seem to react. Okay, because I figured, like, maybe if he was somehow shielded from the lightning, we could have just, like, tagged along with him on his next patrol, but that is not to be, I guess. <laughs> what you about do, the swarm? You do make out swarms moving across the, the area. They seem to be a little bit more adept at uh, where the lightning is not met by the blue... Uh, the dark lightning met by the blue lightning, they are a little more adept at spreading themselves out so that it does not take up the entire swarm, but they are getting getting hit a bit. The swarm that's inside is continuing to kind of work on this, this uh, uh, blue uh, cylinder, but it doesn't seem to be do having any positive effect. Okay. Uh, you do notice, and actually a few seconds later, you do see... Uh, some of a swarm moving underneath the grate. That's also when you realize the grate is not that deep. It's only about a foot and a half. Okay, so we couldn't like fit in there, or at least I couldn't fit in there. <laughs> but it does seem to have some sort of a entrance because you you saw it from the outside. You did not hear a door opening. Okay. Okay. Well. Um... Yeah, in preparation for hoofing it, uh, Silas is going to uh, spend another charge off the ring full of healing words that he's got to heal four. Oh, well, better than nothing. It's down to two. So how does everybody look at this particular point? 60 out of 80. Silas that is trying to beat the crap. Uh, but uh, he's But mobile. perfectly pressed clothes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, where's the bag of holding? <laughs> I have it. Okay. Silas attempts to put the uh, the uh, the cleaning or basin thing into the bag of holding. Uh, the opening is not that big on a bag of holding. Let me see. Uh, it might be a stretch. See if I can find. Uh, looking at it with his magic, say, is the whole thing magical, or just the orb that's sitting in the in the basin? Um, 
The basin does not appear to be magical, but it does appear to be guiding the magic. Because the, the actual uh, uh, geyser came from the bottom. Uh, let's see. Roughly two feet in diameter, actually. Uh, I think you could stretch the bag over it. It might be a little risky. Well, uh, he'll leave it up to Annie. I mean, it'd be a nice thing to have, but it's not like it's a... Well, I mean, unless it does other stuff as well, it's probably not a powerful magic item, but... Uh... You do have the feeling that there are other other uh, things you can access with the ring, but it would take some investigation. Yeah. The manual's missing. Yeah. I mean... He said, I'd like to take it. I think I can make it do other things, but... Uh... Well, he I, looked... I, I... I don't know. I don't want to risk losing this bag either, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, hey. the, the cleaning thing, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. That's why we have multiple of those around the castle, but it's. I don't think it's worth risking destroying the bag for. What castle would mm. that be? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> you know the castle let's, in the place. Let's have that be just a deception roll, just for fun, to see if it's oh nothing or oh uh nothing. Yeah, I didn't think uh -uh. it was going to be a problem. <laughs> I will roll his his uh, his in, his insight, but I don't think it's even possible. Where are we here? It could, for an, it, it could make for an awkward, awkward moment if it was a awkward moment. Uh, let's see here. I mean, no. Oh, there he is. What is his insight? <laughs> yes, he cannot roll that high. <laughs> <laughs> so, but a nat twenty would give him a suspicion. So let's go ahead and roll that part just to see, because I'm curious. That is not a nat twenty. That is a nat two. Okay. <laughs> um. Of course. Uh, so what would you like to do? Actually, I, I'm not going to try to, to push it into the bag. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, stylus. Uh, summons his fish man. His, uh, he's going to summon aberration. Uh, and uh, that'll stick around for an hour as long as he can maintain concentration, and it will carry it for him. Okay, did we have a... Did we actually have a thing for him or not? I think we did once when I used him, but I don't remember what it was we used. It's been a long time. Uh, let me see here. I have... Um, guys, this is Gorgle Blorp. Gorgle Blorp. Guys. Hi, Kirkle Blorb. Wait, is, is Crispy still with me? Or did no. he get left behind? Okay. Crispy didn't go through the uh, Crispy didn't go through the, the portal. Gotcha. Hmm, I found Zakis, but I didn't find that. Alright, I will give you a uh, <laughs> I will give you a sea devil fish man. I think that's what we used last time. Uh, did it actually show up? I don't see one. There we go. I see one now. That's a, yep. All right. Controlled by... You, or go blork. There, you should be able to see Gorgle Blork. He should be under your command. Uh, and indeed, this fish man appears. Tell me how this appears. What's it look like when he appears? Uh, 
uh yeah silas pulls out the uh oh, what is it? it's like a crystal a, an expensive crystal vial with a bit of tentacle floating in it um and uh basically draws out a a, a very simple summoning circle on the ground uh which kind of glows purple for a bit and out of it rises uh this uh, sort of fishman thing, like it's climbing out of the ground. Does it, it have the marsh there. look? Well, is it, it is looks it a relative? like a. Uh, sorry. Is it a relative? Nope. Nope. It's a full-on fish guy. Okay. Sorry, you were saying it looks like. Uh, no, it just it uh, it stands there, uh, awaiting orders. And okay. uh, I think, pick this up and carry it with us. And it, it uh, looks a little bit suspicious at the rest of you. Uh, and then flinches a little bit at the lightning, flinches a little bit at seeing the swarms of mechanical spiders. It's probably not going to have a great day. It's still there. Uh, but indeed, uh, it goes over and uh, puts both hands to the sides of the pedestal and heaves the whole thing up. It yeah, is a bit. A, it is a bit heavy, but yeah, it has a strength of sixteen. Yeah, but uh, no, okay, let's it, let's go. Yep. Right, there are two doors on the uh, on the side there. If you want to take one of those. Yeah, so I was just come down here and open up that one for people. Okay. And from there, you can see that... Uh, I'll also tell Gosh to come over. <laughs> oh, yes. Gosh is just kind of observing things. Looks a little bit sideways at Gorgle Plork. Uh, you can <laughs> see that there's a, a, a landing just outside the door that leads to a set of stairs. From where you are right there, um, you can see there's only about six feet to the very edge of where this land ends. And on that edge, that's where you see, at least for here, it seems as though the, the, the shielding effect of whatever's going on, the counter lightning that's going on, seems to hold it there. Um, Silas, you're the first one out. Uh, how about you make a... Let's call this a, a charisma saving throw. Okay. 16. Nice. Beyond the black lightning, what you would assume was simple empty space, maybe open to a sky, although it's weird to see a sky on a, hor on a horizontal from you, um, you make out a massive figure. At least that's one way to describe it. It is like a, a dark uh, darkness within the darkness, and from it, long tendrils of shadows seem to extend in multiple directions. You shudder for a moment, realizing that on the very edge of this place is not just a storm which seems to extend around it all, a mindless but destructive storm, but you can sense the sort of malicious nature, the hungry, needing nature of whatever is just beyond the threshold. You shake it off. Do you tell anybody else about it or just let them experience it for themselves? Um, I will give the warning, say, um, I th think there's a thing that's attacking this place. Try not to look at it. It might blow your mind in a, an unfortunate way. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> Incoming existential dread. Pretty much. I'll make sure I keep my eyes to the floor and just think of Agnes and fire. And with each person coming out, you will also make a charisma saving throw. However, you will make it with advantage. Uh, hey. Your spirit also has to make a charisma saving throw. Your what? The summoned fish man. Okay. Uh, okay, this is not going to be good. Oh, no. Nine. There's a one, so with advantage, that's a two. Cool. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a constitution saving. Oh, thank goodness. There we go. There's charisma. Okay. Uh, wow, we got a nat 20. 
My fish man with that got an 18. <laughs> he has a minus two charisma. Uh, okay. So it looks like uh, actually everybody. Ex oh, uh, let me do one for Dudek here too. Um, and I decided, for, like, uh, what could possibly hurt with just looking at it once? <laughs> what can possibly oh my god um, what the fuck? Ah. let's see ah. okay that's for dudek uh dudek does quite well or that um uh yep yeah. okay so that one oh <laughs> So yeah, um, Medric. What's up? <laughs> As each of you come out and you are aware of this thing, you can't help but take a, a glance in its direction, even if you try not to. And each of you is aware that it is aware. It moves slightly, and its its extensions seem to move and reform and stretch out. Um, and you can almost see on the inside where the uh the lightning storms meet it's almost as though at it's touching that pushing on it stretching itself you can feel this malevolent presence just beyond uh medric you have put your faith in the sun the sun is unstoppable it is an ever-present mm. thing it is the thing which makes life possible it is not here it is far away from you it is, can he help you? You are frightened. Now, if you can't be frightened, because there are some people who have certain rest <laughs> restrictions against that, that might be good. I think you can be frightened, however. Yep. So, at any point on this plane, you are frightened. You may have a way to, to shake it off, but right now, this whole plane scares the bejesus out of you because you know it's trying to get, con it's, it's, this thing is trying to consume it. And, and you can hear like this, this tiny little whisper in the back of your head. This little probe, wordless, but it's like the mental equivalent of a slavering tongue running down your mind. Gross. Yep. All right. Now, and with that, I have to run away as quickly as possible. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, but uh, normally, but they're not. Make well, you, you don't have to run away, but you probably want to. It's not that kind of frightens. It's not all the frightens cause that. Yeah, you uh, get disadvantage, but. That's now that said, the lightning is striking out in this area. Um. Most of the, let's call it anti-lightning, is emerging from the short tower, which is in the center. Uh, I suspect your destination is to make it to the tower over on the far side. Yes. Um, as far away from that thing as possible. And you can also Need see, just at this point, that other humanoid is kind of wandering around the corner, seemingly on patrol. So, the lightning is striking at multiple places throughout this entire area. It does occasionally, and most of the time, get blocked by the blue lightning. Describe to me how you're going to try to get across there, and then we'll make the appropriate rolls. As quickly as possible, because I want to get away from the thing. Okay. Yeah, Silas and his uh, summoned companion are just going to run as fast as possible and dash. Okay. Same. Quick, quick question. Who who ended up with the sword? I think Silas. Did Silas it end it? up going? Uh, the did sword. Did it end up the... going into the bag of holding or? Yeah, yeah, that'd okay. be bag of holding. So is the, the plans just run as fast as possible? Exactly. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> okay. Just want to check something here. Uh, 
Silas will scream parkour and attempt to acrobatics his way across. <laughs> okay. Um, well, you're all effectively doing the same thing, which is just running like hell. So it will be a dexterity saving throw to oh, no. avoid being struck. Uh, Medric, you I'm are making this with disadvantage. Putting, yep. I'm putting anything that is metal into the bag of holding. Okay, so your daggers and anything else? I don't know how much else metal. The, the dagger is, is the, the main thing Okay. Uh, that I would have. All right. Um, now, I'll explain this ahead of time rather than at the moment. Silas and Dudek. You're going to have a higher difficulty as the lightning will seem to seek out items of the Argenti Segex, which you'll only realize once you've gotten basically halfway through. So for everybody else, it's difficulty 15. For Silas <laughs> and Dudek, it's difficulty 17. Uh, this counts as magic, right? It does count as magic. Okay, thank good. And like I said, if there's any other preparation you have to move across this dangerous, dangerous area, better say it now. Um, can we have inspiration? <laughs> can, you, can you have Not inspiration? Not that it would help me any, I'm already at advantage, but... Uh, well, inspir uh, inspiration is a reroll. Uh, sure, everybody can have inspiration. I've been very bad at giving out inspiration, so it's appropriate you would have collected it by now. In the future, what I'm going to suggest is when something cool happens, uh, suggest, hey, could that person have inspiration? Mm. Let's try not to spam that, but I think that's a cool, cool way to do it. And I'll try to remember okay. it myself. Dex, save. Yay, 19. All right. Fuck this shit. And Don't I run a... madly. There's a 17. Okay. And a 16. Wow, I like how my disadvantage roll is better than my advantage roll by far. All right, so far <laughs> you guys are sprinting pretty pretty wildly. That's pretty awesome. 27. Let's see what... Uh, does he have that yet? No. Uh, okay, Fishman just gets a straight plus zero. Go, go Fishman. 18! Jeez. Wow. Woo, go Fishman! Right. I also had a straight plus zero <laughs> and got 16 at disadvantage. Uh, okay, he does not have evasion. He moves very, very quickly, but Dudek does not have evasion. However, he rolls, uh, oh, one below. Ouch. Okay. Uh, so for the rest of you, you're dodging and weaving, uh, trying to predict perhaps where the blue lightning will strike the black, where it's going to be coming from. It does appear as though the black lightning is being overwhelmed, as though the, the tower can only only suppress so many strikes at the same time, and the other one is picking up speed. Um, all of you notice that as, as uh, Silas runs across, the number of, of lightning strikes that are aimed at him seems to be doubled. Similar with Dudek, who manages to make a very wide, broad, fast arc, and yet still seems to be struck by it. Um, and he takes 13. But when the black lightning strikes, it does not seem to strike like lightning does. Ow! But okay. instead seems to... He stopped moving the character. I'm trying to update his hit points. Oh, crap. Sorry. He's by the door now. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, shit, I'm supposed to be controlling Dudek. Uh, as it burns across his skin and leaving these large um, welts behind of dead skin uh, and, and, uh, and the blood almost evaporating as it hits, uh, he lands on the other side uh, with a sort of heavy thump. Um, the rest of you managed to make it through. 
managing to avoid completely the uh, lightning. Uh, but you get the storm is not finished, and you are outside the door. The door okay, is closed, and the door seems to be locked when you try to grab onto it. It seems to be a large, uh, uh, let me just set the scene here a little bit. Uh, it seems to be a large stone tower. And from what you can see, as you look back, you can see that this whole thing was kind of built into a large stone outcropping, not entirely unlike the other station you'd found with Tauzek Riva. The stones are sometimes set, sometimes formed into place. You can see where some magic was done to form this into a much more sturdy tower. You can also see on the very outside little pock marks as the black lightning has struck it. Uh, in front of you is a massive stone door, easily 10 feet tall, carved with runes on the outside, and you can see the, the sort of active um, magical energy. Even with the, without your magical sight, Silas, you can see that it is reacting in a protective mode to keep this door shut. There is no, there is no bar across it, but it feels as though there is a bar on the inside weighing it down. Um, there does not uh, yeah, there does not appear to be a latch that you can see and the hinges are on the inside it is very much locked up you can see flashes of blue on the inside however through small slit windows that are set in different spots along the edges uh, let me move the camera down uh, nope, that's that's not the camera that's too many windows, too many windows. All right. All right. And Annie probably also should move down to join the others. Oh, yes. And uh, what about Gosh? Oh, yeah, Gosh. Let's see how Gosh oh. did. By Gosh, I almost forgot him. Let's see. <laughs> that is a dexterity saving throw. There's not anything special there. Uh, does not have any. No. No. Okay, yeah, it's just straight up. That is an 11. That is not enough. Oh, so no. Gosh, we'll take. Ooh, ooh. As Gosh kind of catches up to you and kind of limping and smarting, you can see uh, down the entire right hand side of, or sorry left hand side of his body it is shredded it is not like a, a, a electrical spark which kind of hits and blows outward it is though it is as though the lightning was a large rake and just scratched down his side uh, and he he is limping and looking very very rough um, so, you know that standing out here for much time is going to be a problem. How are you going to tackle the door? Uh, do I see... Well, I can see it as a player on the map, but do I see the door to the east of us? Or west of us? Uh, yes, you can. So, you're indicating this door over here. Oops. This door over here. Yes. Yep. Yep, you can indeed see that small door in uh, into... Basically, again, it's mostly carved right out of the stone of this outcropping. So I will scream to my friends. There's another door there. Let's go. I don't want to stay out here any longer. And I'll run away. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Actually, might... um, that door is unlocked, so you can open it up. <gasps> and you do see as you step through the door, one of the swarms is, is right there, kind of surprised by you. Hi. Uh, um, I'm going to step up to the to the front of the door. Me and my knowledge of getting in and out of things that you aren't supposed to get in and out of. Um, is there any way that I can see it to pick it? You said that there was that the hinges are on the inside. That's so true. It's a pull door. It opens outward. Yep. So, so is there anywhere oh. that that I can see I would be able to get this to unlock? Uh, if the door opens outward, then the hinges would be on our side. Sorry, you're correct. It does open inward. Yeah. Oh, My yeah. mistake. Right. Um, you can make an investigation roll. Um, I'll give it to you with advantage because of your Thieves Tools training as well. 
Uh, are any of the, uh, uh, Gosh, by the way, is running after uh, to any kind of shelter that he can. Um, Dudek is kind of nervously watching, but you see him kind of no. on his feet all the time. Okay. Nope. There does not appear to be any sort of lock on this door. You can see the edge between the two doors. You can see that it's solidly made. The door itself seems like it has been battered a little bit, probably by the lightning. Um, it is meant to be a stronghold. But there is, or does not appear to be any lock on it. That does strike you as strange. Mm. Uh, especially here where shelter is absolutely needed. Yes, it would need to be protected, but there must be a way to open this door. You don't see it there, though. Okay. Silas, I, okay. I am going to take this information and ponder it inside. Okay. <laughs> Your little fish man is looking back and forth at Silas, kind of stepping ever oh. so closely towards the uh, safety. He's not a little fish, man. He's like seven feet tall. Okay. Well, he's um, still, he's burdened by a heavy load and a, and a very big mm -hmm. concern. The room, by the way, now that you've stepped in Medric, looks like it's just mm -hmm. a small storeroom. There are the remnants of crates and bottles and things here, but it doesn't look like any new supplies have been added for a while. The um, spiders, however, stop, climb up the wall, and seem to observe you. Uh, did I get the hey, spiders on there? Like we're sharing the space, spiders. Yeah, we have heard uh, tales of the Flamebringer from our brethren. Do I have the spiders on the wrong level? I might have the wrong level. Nope, not there. Oh. Ah, I put them on the wrong level. Sorry, there are spiders right there. Yeah, the yeah. map disappeared. Oh, did the it? The map is all white. <laughs> oh. Oops, I grabbed the wrong level. You broke the world. Way to go. <laughs> I mean, it's not the first time. There we go. Uh, Silas is going to place the ring against the door and say, open in the name of Urgenti Sagax. Okay. Uh, make please. a persuasion roll. Can I use a command? <laughs> he said, please. <laughs> uh, can you use what, sorry? Can I use a command spell out of the staff? I got one charge left. Uh, who are you going to target it at? The door. Um, I think you know enough that the door, unless it actually is intelligent, is not going to be subject to that spell. Okay. Then we'll try persuasion. 27. Natural 20. Nice. Interesting. Okay. Um, Interesting. Okay. A natural 20 is a kind of a, a boss roll at that point. So that changes things. Uh, the door does not let open. In, let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in. <laughs> the door does not open. But uh, Huh. Okay. Medric. Yes. Ah. The spiders on the wall that have been observing you. Uh, start to clamber excitedly. Good excitedly and, or bad excitedly? Well, that'll be up to you to decide. They arrange themselves into a rough approximation of a face. And a voice comes from the face as it mimics a face, face's movement too. So it is though it is a, a, a horrific drawn, uh, it's like one of those, those, those Google uh, n or not n gram searches, but they were doing those those reverse uh, image searches where they would construct the image out of other parts, mm -hmm. and, it, and it led to a lot of really weird images that are made up of cat parts and cat faces. Well, imagine that, but this is made out of metallic spiders as it tries to form a face and says to you, tell your friend I cannot open the door, but there may be another way. 
Does everybody else hear that, or? Everybody's in the room hears that, but it's right in front of you because it's paying attention to you. Okay. Tell your friend you, I cannot open the door. Hmm. What, what um, was the rest of it? I was ready. But there may be another way. Um, Silas, the door does not budge. As in another door, or another way to open the door? Uh, there's a loud rumbling coming from the the, uh, the lightning. You fear that it might strike again soon. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not open right now. Yeah, uh, let's head to where the others are uh, and uh, think. Silas. Our thinking closet. <laughs> And while we're here, I'll give Gosh a level three healing spell because he looks pretty good up. <laughs> uh, and once again, I reach for the wrong screen. There we go. Gosh uh, gets twenty three HP back. Twenty three. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, where is Gosh? And I'm at a level three spell slots now. <laughs> now he's got twice what I have. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> twenty three. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, well, he was down to seven just to give the illustration. Uh, and actually, as you come in, Gosh closes the door. <laughs> so you are <laughs> in this st storeroom, which would normally be quite accommodating, but there are, what, a 12 of you or whatever it is now. Uh, it's our thinking closet. The, you do see the face on the wall, though, Silas, as you come in. And weirdly, it does seem to observe you as you come in. Uh, it, you're not sure how. It doesn't have eyes. It's made up of multiple mechanical spiders, but yet there is sort of a following gaze. First, uh, Silas, I must know who he... you are. Is he asking that to us, or...? It seems to be looking at Silas, but, I mean, it's saying it to everybody. You are the ones who went through the Room of Four, yes? The Room of Four? The door in four parts. Yes. yes. Yeah, totally. Then I must ask I you once again, friend. what is your reason for being here? We're seeking to help a friend who has become lost in another realm. Two and a half friends who have become lost in the other realm. Mm. I'm Two and a half! I'm counting Graveler as a half friend who's like, he's not mm. very sentient. <laughs> he's, he's useful and I like him. But he's also only lost because we haven't summoned him back yet. Yeah. <laughs> Can we do that? Yes. It would leave her alone, though. That yeah, was your dilemma, is if it worked, then right, she right. would be alone. Yeah. Um, we're here looking for... We were sent here for to find something. We're not sure what it is, but we believe it's in that tower. Uh, and it apparently can help us find our friend. There was a time when that could be freely given. But I fear it's been a long time since we were able to. Also, we'd like to get out of here because there's a giant thing over there trying to eat this place. It has been trying for a long time. I fear it will finally succeed. Perhaps then I will have failed. Failed? What's your job? What's your purpose? Who are you, anyway? Sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, <laughs> I suddenly Sorry, blanked on the name. I am Volante Eleanor. I fear that I am the last, a guardian of this place, trapped by my protection. When you leave here, what do you intend to do? Hey, Leonard, do you know Nindral? And while there's not a lot of tone that's transmitted by mechanical spider faces, there is somewhat of... I'm not quite sure. What are people's insight scores? Plus nine. Plus one. Plus one. Medric. You. 
there is a sense of sadness and loss in the response. It's quickly covered up almost by discipline or by rote, but it's there. I knew Nindral. I do not hope to see him ever again. Sorry, see her ever again. How do you come to know this name? We, we found, found this note, and I'll put it out of the bag of holding. Do you hold it up to the spider face? Yeah. The face kind of folds as several of the spiders kind of cling together to try to reach and ha grab onto the uh, grab onto the note. Do you give uh, it to I'll them? Let, uh, I'll let it happen. Okay. And it kind of brings it close as the spiders kind of cluster around the form of the face now, long lost. May they find their peace, and may they have found it together. This outpost... Perhaps we traveled too far. I may have another way for you to enter the tower. The door will no longer open. It is not under my command. And those who could open it, I think, are long gone. Yeah, there was two other names that the Guardian gave us, or the big robot walking thing. And I'll mention the names to her, which I forget, because it's on the other page. If you Mekasuke found... And yeah. Delsaron Revelar. If you have found their things, then they have not come back to claim them. Fear they too are lost. What is this place? It was known as the Sanctum of Residence, but... You mentioned traveling too far. And what's that thing outside? It's creeping me out. We are on the very edge of the far realm. Beyond all the planes of good and evil, beyond all the planes of known elements and things that are of understanding to mortals. Beyond is chaos. Beyond is hunger this was to be a place where we were transformed where we became much like the guardian it is a hollow shell meant to hold us I was not able to Finish my transformation. Um, to be transformed for what, for what purpose? To be able to go further. To be able to travel any of the planes with safety. Okay. Silas. Make, um, let's call it a, a religion role. Oof, okay. Something about the term far realm rings familiar to you, but you can't quite mm. put your finger on it. Yeah. It's speaking in common, this face as well. Uh, Valenti, uh, uh, just to make sure you heard me earlier, I do apologize for the initial uh, blast of fire when we first met. Because on our home realm, there were mechanical creatures that attacked us previously, and I, I just automatically thought you were going to do the same. So, no hard feelings? The maintainers have told me of this incident. But do not make the mistake to think that I am them. Because they are close, I am exerting myself to speak through them, but they are independent. So where are you, your physical body. I am inside the crucible, inside the tower. The tower? 
but we need to get in there then. Is there another door, or is it a, some other way to get in? By design, there is no other door. But, in the training grounds out front, there is a tower, a small one, an obelisk, really. Embedded in it is a tool I think we can use. But it will be dangerous to use. The obelisk that was casting the blue electricity to defend? Yes. Okay. What is it that you need taken out, and how do I access it? The obelisk has many faces. You must turn one of the faces toward the door and destroy it. The door or the face? The door. Okay. Ah, gotcha. Yes, the faces launch the electricity. Gotcha. They can do more than that. It was a useful tool in training to teach our pupils how to defend themselves against many forms of power. It's used to fight back on the threshold is an adaptation. To answer your earlier question, I do not know what this thing is called. I only know that it is eager to consume us. Yeah, I can feel that. I believe beyond the far realm, or rather beyond the void in the far realm, there are pockets of peace. Perhaps some of my other co cousins have found them, but I fear I will never. You say you are seeking for a well. way to retrieve your friends from other planes. I think I can give that to you. That would be great. And if we can find any, any way to help you, we will do so. If I can complete the transfer and merge with the armor, then I will stand a chance. Got it. Uh, know this, however. When the door is breached, the spiders and others will come to my defense. I cannot convince them otherwise. To the tower may not, the obelisk may not stand up against the black lightning again. We can try to reset it. This place will be lost but it has been on the edge of oblivion for a long time. Literally. <laughs> uh, Silas is going to drain the last two charges, uh, healing word charges from the ring. Uh, what do I get? 2d4 plus 6, so 13. That's a little better. Uh, it is Silas. No. Oh, he's under the... Yeah, there we go. Um, he says... Uh, he takes the stuff that he took from the cabinets... Uh, and asks Annie if she can put those in the bag of holding as well. Yeah. The lightning seemed to be attracted to them. Sure thing. I will go and turn the face. You guys get ready to run in there. If we have to fight, I'm probably not going to be much good after this. 
good to know. Uh, one and correction. Um, the black lightning did not appear to be attracted by the items. It appeared to be attracted by the rings. Ah. Well, Silas thought it was, thought it was, was the items, so. It, it was you and Dudek that were affected, and that's the only common denominator. Oh, yeah, yeah. I knew that was us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well. Did our characters notice that, by the way? Or? But you, you did notice that the lightning seemed to be a little more eager to attack Dudek and Silas. So mm. I'll ask uh, Valenti, it's like, is there any reason why the thing outside is attacking Argenti Sagax members specifically with the Black Lightning? It has been here a long time. Even when we still flourished, I can only assume that it has acquired a taste or it is familiar with the feeling. I'll just nod. Okay. Uh, I tell Gorgle Blarp to uh, set down the uh, the uh, stone the ba uh, stone basin. Okay. Uh, and to come with me, we need to we need to do an about face on a uh, a uh, thingy out here. And Silas will run out. So no other planning, no other guidance, just going to book it? Well, I mean, if someone wants to guidance me on the way out, that's that's well, fine. I, but I didn't uh, mean yes, necessarily guidance. literally guidance. I meant, is there any other part to the plan other than I'm going to run and then you guys run? This, uh, I will this give is, Silas guidance. This, yeah, this is Silas. Uh, he doesn't tend to plan much. Uh, he just thinks. Uh, he said, basically, just get ready. If this works, run hard. Um, and where are we running to? The door. Uh, the doorway. Uh, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it said that turning a face on one of these things could blow it open. So hopefully this will work. Uh... So what does Silas see when he gets up there, assuming he doesn't get uh, blasticated uh, before then? Fortunately, the closer you get to the uh, the uh, the um, obelisk, uh, it does seem like it is heavily protected. So it starts to launch lightning from where it is, and nothing seems to be very getting very close to it. Even as you walk close to it, you kind of sense almost like you're walking through thick gel or water as you get very, very close. In the mm. center part of this, uh, at about uh, eye level, you notice that uh, there is a section of this. It is um, a four-sided obelisk with a, a pyramid on the top. But there's a section in the middle um, which seems to have handles, and there are four sides uh, that are visible. Uh, I need to look up something real quick here about that. Uh. All right. Um, the sides are simple geometric shapes, a square, a circle, a triangle. Uh, a rectangle in a diamond shape. Valenti would have told you, uh, because you kind of ran off before she could actually explain, but presumably the conversation was a little bit longer than that, um, that you need to turn it, first of all, you need to disengage uh, from the top, so grabbing two of the handles, pressing down, and it will disengage from the pyramid on top, turn it around so that the square is facing you and uh, away from the door, and then re-engage. That will require an arcana check to get it right. Okay. Uh, and you will also need a dexterity saving throw uh, at disadvantage. Uh, okay. uh, sorry, at straight, because the tower itself will help to protect a little bit. Um, uh, well, so I have... Uh, you have magic anyway, so, anyways, yeah, yeah, so it's a straight uh, roll. Yeah. Okay. There's an arcana 26. And Dang. what are the rest nice. of you doing in the meantime? Anything? Getting ready to run. Try not to look at the thing. 
Place Basically, better. Silas kind of ran off and. <laughs> And I'm also, keeping an eye, I'm also keeping an eye, an eye on Silas because if he gets hit with lightning once, I'm just going to toss him to heal. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, placing bets on whether Silas gets back or not. Yeah, basically. Um, so 26 on the Arcana, what was the dex roll? Or the dex save? Uh, dex save. Oh, nice. 20. Uh, also roll a dex save for uh, oh, your yes. companion. Uh, yeah, he's got a Straight plus zero, so four. Four is not enough. Uh, so uh, you turn, uh, you sort of disengage. You feel the the sort of uh, energy that was emitted by the top go dim as it no longer is transferring all of its energy to this defensive element. Um, you spin it around and re-engage. It seems to, to, uh, to, or rather, change it to its normal usage. Uh, you press the center, and in slow motion, is at least what it feels like, uh, a wave of pure force pushes out from this pillar. You can actually feel the whole thing start to tilt a little bit back further. It's not fully taking all the force, but you feel like this was a stabilizing pillar for it to be on. Uh, and it presses forward in an expanding arc that pushes first on the door, and it feels like that bow wave builds up, builds up as the rest of it starts to move around the tower, and suddenly the whole thing crunch, crunch, crunches inward. As the lightning crests overhead, striking your for 13 necrotic damage. He dokey. Yeah, he doesn't have anything special for necrotic, so... Uh, and he takes the hit, but he's still standing. I will go and actually remove the door from the lighting level. Uh, oh, it's on the object level, anyway. The door is dead. We have killed the door. door is, is that dead. that what you're saying? Uh, and now it is a straight run in. Uh, all of you once more will have to make dexterity saving throws. Not uh, the Fishman or Silas. You effectively have done that already for this round. I'm assuming you're just going to sprint the 10 feet to get in the door. Uh, what you will see as the, as the wall crumbles in, the doors fall inward off to the side, is you see a central pillar. It looks as though it is a perfect cylinder shape in the center of the room that glows blue. Lightning flashes all around it. You see a small figure in the very center of this, uh, surrounded by uh, what would look like silver metallic uh, frame over all of their body. Um, they're wearing uh, a, a small shift, if you will, just enough for modesty, but otherwise you see this, uh, this halfling-sized person um, is suspended in the blue light or liquid within lightning uh, spiraling around them. Small glints on numerous parts of their body uh, as reflections from the, the bright and brilliant light. In the center of the room where this goes, there are numerous um, thick cords that roll off in different directions, especially off to, from your perspective, the right or the west of the room. Um, the person in there, their head is covered in what looks like a helm with no eyes. Um, and they do not seem to move, although there's an the occasional bubble of air pockets within. Uh, so, the dexterity saves. Again, 15s for everybody except for Dudek, where it has a specific hankering to hurt him. Was I able to uh, shake off the fear or the fright? No, no, the fear is still remaining. Unless you actually are able to do something to shake off the fear, it will remain. Okay. Um, All right, let's disadvantagedly run towards the entrance. 14, uh, 18. That 18 would have been nice, but... Um, 15 uh, was your target? That... Yeah. Uh, Dudek fails as well. All right. Uh, let's see, do we have... Uh, Annie already played, so yeah. we'll need a roll for for Gosh as well. 
Uh, but first, from for Medrick. Let's see how bad this gets. Well, you got lucky. Seven necrotic damage uh, against Dudek. Four necrotic damage. Wow. Um, you guys are uh, getting pretty lucky here. And let's see how Gosh does. Uh, Gosh gets an 18, so Gosh makes it nice. without any concern as well. And actually, before you were able to run out, um, Medrick, you're looking at, out at the proceedings going on. You're kind of tensing. You've got your, your legs ready. And then you feel an ever so light tug on your cape and realize mm -hmm. that the swarm of spiders has leapt onto your cape. Cool. I think you have a cape. If not, yeah, then onto cloak. your back. Cloak. They then yeah. get fried by the lightning. Uh, they're mechanical. They're, they're, they're immune to it. They're not immune to it. Uh, they did indeed oh, take no. damage out of that because they can't dodge on their own. Uh, you took seven. Yep. So they're still they're still functional. Um, and all of you make it in. And again, what you see in front of you is a halfling suspended in a, in a tube. It looks like a clear tube, so it might be clear crystal or glass. Um, lightning spiraling all around them. Uh, and you also hear um, the now familiar voice of that guardian. A breach has been detected. Trying to help Valanti. Summoning. And it pauses in the yard. Does get struck once or twice, and I'll have to roll for that in a moment. But as it... Uh, moves in. Did you reset the tower before running in, or just run in, Silas? They didn't say anything about resetting the tower. Okay, so there is no blue lightning now, now protecting against them. Oh, uh, which means the difficulty goes up. I'm just going to roll that here. That is, oh wow, good success. Uh, and that is a failure. So. All right. As you look out, you get inside, you look out, and you can see now small spiders have, have started to drag metal bits into different places and are assembling another, uh, well, let's call it a construct, uh, on the training ground. It's not fully together yet and it is getting struck by lightning. Uh, and you see this, this being in front of you. The spiders crawl off of your uh, cloak, Medric, and seem to look up at the tube. And you hear from multiple little voices, Oh, I didn't know I looked like that. As the lightning crashes outside, and you can hear another sound, like the keening of a thousand voices, all eagerly waiting to consume. And that's what we're going to call it for tonight. Nom 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 food. On the threshold, no as the creature on the threshold decides to try to uh, eat everything in sight, as the shield seems to be down for the moment. And hopefully you can help poor Valente, or at least survive this whole thing. I mean, survival yeah. would be kind of key. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, survival is generally recommended. We've done stars and wishes a little bit before. I kind of like to make that a normalized practice. This is simply where you get to call out any cool things that any of the, the PCs or NBCs, myself or any players have done. Uh, that you really like, stuff that you'd like to call an extra highlight to and say, hey, that was cool. Wishes are, hey, I'd love us to be able to see this thing coming up. Uh, no wishful thinking in terms of, hey, it all just goes away and we're happily walking up. Eh, pro probably not that. But, if it was all a dream, we all wake up in our own beds. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, you may wake up somewhere. Uh, but for example, hey, I, I really like all this Argenti Segex stuff. More of that would be great. Or eh, this is good. I liked what we had, but I don't have to go into that anymore. If there's anything you'd like to call out, now would be the time. I like the Argenti Segex stuff. Yeah, me too. Exploration is fun. Really? Yeah. And I, I don't like that I failed the save, but it's like I like the Elder Shorter stuff. <laughs> yeah. Kind of been wanting to do that for a while. Well, uh, with that... Let's go. Uh, Cthulhu is outside the window. Let's just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. It's not <laughs> always... Let's go. Uncle Cthulhu? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well... With that, we'll call the session to a close. Uh, thank you for watching. If you've been watching at home, I didn't get a chance to actually watch the Twitch channel. So if you've been saying things in there, then thank you. Uh, I didn't see them, but I appreciate them. Uh, you can also watch this on YouTube and watch all 68 prior episodes. Imagine that. It's like a whole, whole lot. Uh, on youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for the uh, LOTDI Campaign 2, The Great Confusion. That's the master playlist for this one. You can also see all previous sessions, which is 50-something, uh, 60-something, of the previous campaign that led up to this in a thousand years, so to speak. Timing gets weird. Uh, also on the uh, Legends of the Drowned Isles or LOTDI or Legends of Omasia. I have another playlist. which is Everything I do in this world will be there. Nonetheless, I want to thank my players for joining me today. And, uh, yeah, we'll do this again in a couple of weeks. Imagine that. Thanks September will probably be slow, but I think we'll have another couple in August uh, before we send people off to conventions and so forth. Uh, but, yeah. You wanted to say, uh, Nax? Oh, just thanks to, thanks to the DM for running. Oh. And when you said thanks for playing. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Everybody have a great day. Let's see if I can hit hit the button, Mark. All right. <laughs>